Hello Matrix and welcome to What's the Matrix. My name is Luni and today we're assisting you with your final exam prep for business studies. All you need to do to get your questions and comments through to us is hit us up on our social media platforms, search for What's the Matrix as well as our WhatsApp line. We've got a cool competition going on for you guys, so please stay tuned to get all of those details later on in the show. I've got Nicolene, our sign language interpreter with me, as well as our awesome teacher, Dave. Thank you so much, guys, and over to you. Hi, Matrix. Welcome to today's lesson. We'll be going over your, your paper one. So please, can you uh, download the, the app, as there'll be a couple of questions on the app that you guys will be able to answer and we'll go through them a bit later. So without any further ado, let's get cracking onto paper one questions. Um, this is just an example of um, a multiple choice question that you, are, that you can do on the app. Please go, go ahead and do it now. You'll see that there's quite a few multiple choice questions. You can give your answers to there, and then we'll be discussing the various answers as we go on. Uh, so we're going to start uh, first with the section B question. Right, and it's explain the, the purpose of the Labor Relations Act. Now, this is an act that a lot of you get confused with in terms of the Employment Equity Act. Right, so you need to make sure that you have a, a thorough understanding of all the different acts that are going to be relevant in terms of uh, business studies. And what is the purpose of those different acts? They can either ask the, the acts in a Section B question where they ask a specific act, or they could look at the impact of the, the act in a section C essay type of question. So let's go through the answer on the purpose of the Labor Relations Act. So firstly, it provides a framework or structure for labor relations between employers, employees, and trade unions. So it gives that, that framework on how are we going to have these various stakeholders, how are they going to be able to interact with each other. Second part, it promotes collective bargaining at the workplace um, level. So um, it's very easy for an, an employer to, to say no to a, an, an individual employee. However, through collective bargaining, the individual employees are able to join with the other employees and they have more of a voice through collective bargaining. And if they have more of a voice through collective bargaining, there's a greater chance of getting them um, uh, what, what they are asking for. Um, it promotes workplace forums to accommodate em employees in decision making. So um, at the workplace forum, a business might say, right, we want to move our factory uh, overseas to China. And the workplace forum is an avenue in which the employees can discuss um, the possibility of, of the business moving to China or why it should stay in South Africa. So it just gives the employees a, a platform for them to, to voice their opinions. Uh, it provides the right for lockout by the employer as a recourse for strength, uh, for lengthy strikes. So if the, the strike has gone on for a couple of weeks, even perhaps a couple of months, the employer has the right to lock out the striking workers so that they can't come into the premises and damage any assets that belong to the employer. It promotes fair labor practices between employers and, in, and employees, right, which, um, which is vital because if there's fair labor practices, there's going to be trust between the employer and the employee, and that's going to increase the productivity of the business. Right, it clarifies and transfers employment contracts between existing and, and new employees. So it just says, right, this is what should be, uh, what the minimum requirement should be for a, for a contract of an employee. And then promote simple procedures for the registration of trade unions. Uh, so if, uh, if, if a, a, a group of em employees would like to start a trade union, it allows them to do that. Where if you look um, in, uh, in the past, it was illegal for, for employees to just start any trade union that they want. Um, it advances economic development and social justice to ensure that the workplace maintains the basic rights of employees, right? And, and you have known that employees are entitled to, to basic rights and just make sure that none of the employees' uh, rights are infringed upon. 
It establishes the Commission for Conciliation, Mediation and Arbitration, or, or known as the CCMA. So if there's a dispute between the employer and the employee, right, they will go to um, the CCMA and they will be um, objective and they will set out a ruling that either the employer or the employee will have to follow. Right, and it also establishes the Labour Courts and the Labour Appeal Court so that um, if the employee isn't happy with the CCMA, they can then go to the Labour Court. If the Labour Court finds against either the employer or the employee, they can then go to the Labour Appeals Court to, to appeal the, the outcome. All right, so we're going to be going uh, on to a, 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 um, a contextual-based question now. So I'm going to be reading it out to you and just see what, uh, what you can pick up. All right, so it's got to do with Meat Market Limited. Meat Market Limited specializes in supplying fresh meat to customers. The company gave some of its shares to their previously disadvantaged employees. All right, very, very big there. That should already be uh, ringing a couple of bells there for you. They, also, they were also offered learnership programs. All right, so we can, see, we can generally see where this question is going. So let's see what the question is going to ask from us. So the first question is, name the act that Meat Market Limited is complying with in the scenario above. Right, so the minute you see the word act, you know that it's a law. Right, so let's look at what act is there, and it's broad-based black economic empowerment. Right, do not confuse it with BEE. Right, broad-based black economic empowerment is a law that uh, the government brought out in which um, it, it regulates how businesses can take part in broad-based black economic empowerment. Right, so that's the first part of that question. Now there's a follow-up to, the, um, to, to the first question. So you need to ensure that you know what you're doing with the acts because if you don't and you get the first question wrong, you're going to get the second question wrong and you're going to lose out on a whole bunch of unnecessary marks there. So the second question was identify two pillars of the act, broad-based black economic empowerment, Right. Uh, from uh, the previous question that Meat Market Limited implemented, motivate your answer by quoting from the scenario above. Please make sure that when you quote, um, you put the quotation marks in there so as to ensure that you don't lose the marks there. All right, so let's look at what the answer is. So the first one is ownership. That's one of the pillars of broad-based black economic empowerment. Right, so if you look there, the company gave some of its shares to their previously disadvantaged employees, right? Remember, broad-based black economic empowerment is about empowering all previously disadvantaged individuals. And the second one is skills development, right? They were offered learnership programs. So we, we upskilling our, um, uh, the, the community or, or potential employees. So we're upskilling them there, which is a, a pillar of broad-based black economic empowerment. All right, let's move on to our, our next question. All right, so suggest practical ways in which a business may comply with the Employment Equity Act. All right, so this is an act that a lot of people get confused with in terms of broad-based Black Economic Empowerment Act as well as the Labor Relations Act. So you want to make sure you have a very good understanding between the three acts. So let's look at the answer here. So firstly, you have to guard against any discriminatory appointments. So you, you cannot um, um, employ someone because uh, you've discriminated against someone else, no matter what, what grounds um, there are. Right? And we have to assess the racial composition of all employees, including senior management. So if we look at it, the Employment Equity Act, it wants to create a workforce that is representative of the demographics of, of the country. Um, we have to ensure that there's equal representation of all racial groups at every level of employment. All right, so if you look at your, your top, middle and lower level management, as well as your, your, actual, employ your actual employees, so it has to be um, representative of the demographics of the country. All right, it has to promote equal opportunities and fair treatment for everyone, no matter what um, racial group they are, uh, their, their marital status, if they have disabilities, um, what, uh, what religion they, they follow, 
Right? Everyone has a fair and equal uh, opportunity in the workplace under this Act. And it must uh, implement an employment equity plan, right? so where they're going to say, right, how are we going to ensure that our business is going to be representative of the demographics of the country? So you have to have a plan, say, right, by this year, we're going to employ so many more women um, in the top, um, top management um, of, of, the, of the company, right? And you're going to have to hand those plans in, and they're going to check those plans to see if you are actually following through on them. Right, uh, clearly define the appointment process so that all parties are well informed, right, so that there's no uh, miscommunication or mistrust. Um, and we use certified psychometric tests to assess applicants or employees to ensure that they are suitable candidates um, are, are appointed. So you, don't, um, you can only use psychometric tests when it is applicable to that, um, to that industry. So if you're um, an airline pilot, you're going to have to go on certain tests. Right? That is applicable for when uh, the pilots are flying a plane. Now, they can't use those same psychometric tests for myself as a teacher because it's not relevant to the work that I'm doing. And ensure that diversity and inclusivity in the workplace is achieved. Right? If we look at South Africa, we are a very diverse country. Right? We've got to ensure that everyone is able to be included because that's going to create a much more productive and a stronger culture in the workplace. Uh, Implement affirmative action measures uh, to redress disadvantages experienced by, by certain groups uh, in, in the past. Right? Uh, we have to employ the employment, uh, prepare an employment equity plan in consultation with, uh, with the employees to make sure that everyone is, is on, the, on the same page. Right? And then we have to submit the employment equity plan to the Department of Labor. Right? And there's, there's a threshold in terms of how big your organization is before you actually have to submit uh, your, your plan to the Department of Labor. Um, you have to assign one or more senior managers to ensure the implementation and monitoring of the employment equity plan. So there has to be someone from uh, top management to make sure that, that uh, this equity plan is actually going to happen. Uh, eliminate barriers that have an adverse impact on designated groups and accommodate people from different designated groups. So we're going to make sure that, that everyone um, feels welcome in our business and we can accommodate for everyone. So if you, if you look um, at a lot of um, government buildings, there will be um, um, like, um, ways so that people who are, who are disabled can get into the office. So there will be the office ramps or there'll be special uh, elevators, so that no one is um, left out. Everyone is included. Um, we have to retrain, uh, develop and train designated groups through skills development, um, regularly report to the Department of Labor on the progress in implementing your plan, and employees must be paid um, equal for the equal value of work that they, that they have. So you'll see that like there's a lot of um, sports um, tournaments now where, where men and women get paid an equal amount right? because they're saying they're doing the exact same uh, amount of work so therefore they should get paid equally. Right, uh, our next question is recommend ways in which the quality of performance of the purchasing function could contribute to the success of the business. So we're now going to be looking at, at quality and how can the purchasing function add to that quality. Right, so firstly, the businesses should buy raw materials or products in bulk at lower prices. So we buy in bulk, we're able to get it for cheaper. If we can get our products for cheaper, we're going to make more profit. If we make more profit, chances of our business being more sustainable are going to increase significantly and will also help like, prevent the business from taking big knocks uh, when there's a, a, a financial downturn in the economy. Uh, we have to select reliable suppliers that render the best quality raw materials at reasonable prices. So if you look at, uh, at Rolls-Royce, they are going to go and buy uh, leather from the best leather makers in the world because that's what their, their product is about. Their product is all about quality. So they have to make sure that they go and get the best 
suppliers for their raw materials because that is what um, they're going to be selling to their customers. Uh, we have to place orders timelessly to make sure that goods are delivered on time, that we don't run out of goods. Uh, you just um, think of ESCOM when they were running out of coal, then we had load shedding and how negatively that impacted the country. So we want to make sure everything is on time, um, ensure that there's no break in production due to stock shortages, um, as I just mentioned. Right, uh, there must be effective coordination between the purchasing um, so that the purchasing staff understand the requirements of the, of the production process and we should always make sure that we have the required quantities should be delivered at the right time and at the right place. Um, we must maintain effective stock control systems to make sure that we don't run out of stock or we don't have too much stock and maintain optimal stock levels to avoid overstocking because we don't want to have to rent another warehouse to take in uh, all, of our, all of our stock. Um, then uh, effective use of storage space and uh, we have to involve our suppliers in strategic planning. Because right? if our suppliers can give us the right products that we want and everything that we're looking for, then we're going to be on a, on a winning wicket. Um, and we must establish relationships with our suppliers because if we've got a relationship with them, our supplier is not going to want to let us down and we can build um, a strong relationship going forward where our supplier and our business are both going to benefit. And then we must have a thorough understanding of supply management. And uh, Looney, back to you. Thank you, Dave. Guys, as Dave said earlier, please download the To Enable app to take part in that assessment, it is for free on your app store. So head on over there and check it out and then we'll check some of your answers later on in the show. But for now, we are gonna take a quick break guys and we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back from the break matrix. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show. If you've just joined us, we are doing your final exam prep to help you with the upcoming exam. If you're constantly running out of data, then this next competition is just for you. Wazamatrix is bringing you the hashtag Wazawina competition, where two lucky matriculants stand a chance to win two gigs of data. All you need to do to enter is head on over to our Facebook page and all of the details will be there. Dave, thank you so much and over to you. Welcome back, Matrix. We're going to be going over some more questions from your paper one. First question we're going to go over is name three types of business environments and state the extent of control businesses have over each of these environments. Now, this is quite a, a tricky question because a lot of you get confused between business environments and business sectors. Right, so you need to, to make sure that you understand the difference between the two there. So often what they'll give you is they'll ask you to um, answer it in tabular form. So just make sure that uh, you, you can draw a quick table, try and make it as, as, as neat as possible just to, just to help your final markers. Right, so let's go and see what, uh, what the answer for this, for this question is. So if we look, the first environment is the micro environment. So the micro environment is the business itself. Now um, you, you'll see uh, with the answer behind me, it has to do with the micro, market and macro environments where a lot of people get confused between the different sectors of the economy in whereby you have the primary sector, you have the secondary sector and you have the tertiary sector. Remember the primary sector has to do with the extraction of raw materials from the earth Think of farming, think of mining, think of forestry, think of fishing. The secondary sector has to do with taking those raw materials and manufacturing them into either finished products or into products that can be used uh, by, by other businesses. And then the tertiary sector has got to do with supplying services to the consumer. So think of the tertiary sector such as, as banking and uh, the secondary sector such as car manufacturers. Where the question was asking us, tell us about the three different business environments that we have and state the control of each environment. So the first environment, as I mentioned, is the micro environment. Now every business 
is the microenvironment. So it doesn't matter if you're a farmer, right, because your farm would be considered as your, as your microenvironment, the actual business itself, or if you're um, a car manufacturer, your microenvironment is still the business itself, despite you operating in the secondary sector. If you look at a bank, a bank, uh, the business itself is the microenvironment, despite them operating in the tertiary sector. So make sure that you understand the difference between the two there, that you don't lose easy marks. Now the microenvironment, the business has full control over. So we determine what we want our mission and vision to be, what strategy we want, who do we want to employ in the business, what is the organization culture of the business. We have full control over that. Doesn't mean because we have full control over that that we're going to be successful, and um, there's, there's a lot of other factors there, but we have full control. We can decide who do we want to work in our business. What does our business want to sell? What do we have to offer? So we can control that fully. No one else from the outside can come in and be like, right, this is what, uh, this is what you should be selling today. Right, so we have full control there. Now the second business environment is the market environment. So that is the environment that is just outside of the business itself. So if we look there, the market environment is going to have our suppliers. It's going to have uh, intermediaries. It's going to have our competition. Right? It's going to have civil society. So our trade unions are going to, to form a part of that. So that's that, this is the environment that impacts the business. Now, if you look at um, the extent of control that we have in the market environment, we have partial or limited control. Right, so if you look at um, uh, a soft drinks company, they can advertise and try and influence you to buy more of their products. Right? However, they have not got full control over their consumers. They can't say, right, today you will go and buy a, a one litre cold drink from our, from our company. They can influence us though by having adverts or, uh, or, or competitions or promotions to try and get us to buy that product. Then the final environment is our, is our macro environment. So our macro environment, we have absolutely no control. Right? So um, if you look at um, the political environment of, of the United States, now that has got nothing to do with our, our individual business. However, the outcome of a United States election can have a massive impact on our, on our business uh, itself, because maybe they're um, uh, going to bring in different tariffs. So if you look at the, the trade war between the United States and China, even though South Africa has nothing to do with it, um, it did have a negative impact on, uh, on businesses in South Africa. If you look at um, when there was um, the, the, the COVID uh, lockdown, that had a negative impact on the business. So your business might have had nothing to do with, um, with people interacting with each other, but because uh, the president brought in a lockdown and, and said a lot of uh, non-essential businesses would have, to, would have to shut down for the period of the lockdown, right, that had a direct impact on our business. So I can't control that. I cannot control what the exchange rate with the rand and the dollar is going to be. I cannot control what laws are going to come in. I cannot control technology. Right. I have to, however, adapt to it. But in terms of the business environment, we have got no control. So you can see in the micro environment, we've got full control. We can sort out everything that we want. The, the market environment, we've got, we got partial or limited control in whereby we can influence our consumers. Um, we might have a superior product to our competitors. And because of that, we can, uh, we can influence them um, we can also work with like our suppliers to make sure that we have the best suppliers and we can influence them by making sure we pay them on time and in the macro environment that's where we have um, absolutely no control right and our businesses have to learn how to adapt to that otherwise um, our businesses will be going by the wayside All right, so um, we are now going to identify leave provisions in the Basic Conditions of Employment Act um, from, from the, the various statements. So we're going to see what type of leave 
are they saying in the statement? Now remember, we get different types of leave and you need to make sure that you use the correct terminology for this leave because if you don't use the correct terminology, you're going to be uh, losing out on some easy marks. So let's see what the first question is saying. So it says, Ruth, the secretary, was allowed to stay home for four consecutive months after her baby was born. Right, okay, so there, there's a big clue there. They're talking about her giving birth to a baby and she was allowed to be off work for four consecutive months. So if we, uh, if we look at the potential answers for it, it is going to be maternity leave. Right, so maternity leave is entitled um, to, to women when, when, they give, uh, when they give birth uh, to, to a child or uh, even if they uh, adopt a, a newborn child, they're entitled to four consecutive months of, of leave from, uh, from uh, the, the, the company. All right, let's look at uh, our next one. So Ashley, uh, the supervisor, is entitled to take up to 21 days leave per year. All right, so it's not mentioning anything about him potentially being sick. So in terms of any sick leave, it's not mentioning anything uh, about family responsibility leave. It's just saying that he is entitled to 21 days of leave. All right, so um, if you look there, the, the law states that everyone's entitled to that leave, right, because we don't want to work uh, everyone to the bone, because otherwise we're going to lose out on productivity. So if we look at the type of leave that, uh, that we'll have there, it is going to be our annual leave. All right, so that's a leave that everyone is in, uh, entitled to for, for, um, for working for, for the entire year. Right. Vinny, back to you. Thank you so much, Dave. Guys, we are going to take a very quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll see you straight after. <laughs> Welcome back from the break, guys. I hope you are still enjoying the show. We're assisting you with your final exam prep to help with the upcoming exams. Dave, thank you so much, and over to you. So we're going to be going over some multiple choice questions now from, from the app. So we're going to be looking uh, at the various options, and we're also going to be seeing uh, how you have answered um, these multiple choice questions. And just to try and help you guys where, where you're getting confused with some certain concepts, and that's why you guys were, were answering them wrong there. So if we look at, at uh, the, the first question, right, so Teddy Car Manufacturers implemented the following integration strategy when they bought tail motor spares. Right, so they're, they're a car manufacturer and now they're buying a motor spares business. So we always see right now, where is, this going to, where is this going to fit in? So let's look at the four options that we have. So first thing we've got is it horizontal integration, intensive integration, forward integration, or backward integration. So let's just have a look how you, how you have answered. So the vast majority of you have gone for horizontal integration. Um, a few of you went for, for uh, intensive. Um, a fair amount of you went for forward, and then a small group of you went for, went for backwards. So if we look at the answer, the answer is actually, there's two possible answers for this question. It can either be forward or backward integration. So if we look at horizontal integration, why it isn't horizontal integration is because they are not buying another car manufacturer. So horizontal integration is when we buy a business that is um, the exact same as ours. If you look at intensive strategies, intensive strategies are there to, to grow your, your market share. So it's definitely not in a, a, an intensive strategy. We now we have forward and backwards. So what could potentially happen here um, in terms of, of forward? So, so Teddy car manufacturers, they make cars, and what they're going to do is they're going to buy a cars uh, spares um, supplier so that they can make sure that the parts that uh, their customers are buying are of the correct quality for Teddy car manufacturers. So there they are taking control of their, of their um, distributors to make sure that, um, that uh, their, their customers are getting the, the best products possible. Now why it's also backward is because um, Teddy car manufacturers could decide, right, we need to make sure that we are getting the best supply possible. 
So in order for us to do that, we need to go and buy our suppliers so we can control our suppliers and the quality of the products that our suppliers are getting so that when they are installed into the car, the, 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 the clients that are buying our cars are getting the best uh, possible quality car out there. So it ensures that there's quality from the parts that they're getting all the way up to the final product that the customer buys or if they're going for, for forward, it's making sure that the customers are able to get any spare parts that they would need for their cars there. So it, it can be a little bit confusing. Just remember forward, we, uh, we're going uh, closer towards our, our customers and backward, we are going closer towards our, our suppliers to ensure that we have the right quality coming into our business. And when we're going forward, it's to make sure that our clients are getting the best uh, possible quality out there. All right, let's go on to our next question. Businesses use quality to direct key processes so that the correct quality standards are met. And the, and the options that we have is either quality control, quality management systems, quality assurance, as well as quality performance, right? So this, this can be a little bit of a tricky uh, question. Quality, um, it, it's quite in depth in metric. So make sure that you understand all the different elements of quality there. So we're going to look at the, uh, the answers there. So if we look at the answer, the answer is management systems. And seems quite a, quite a, a, a fair amount of you've got that on the money there. So uh, we can see that you guys are starting to, to understand that there. Uh, if a couple of you have gone down, down the wrong path, just make sure that you, you understand the differences in the, in the different elements that has to make up with quality. All right, so um, if we go on to our next question, ABC Paints operates in the sector as they specialize in manufacturing of paint. Right, so this is, um, if you recall, um, I spoke about the, the business environments and, uh, and the sectors of the economy and the differences there. Now, this is a question that just relates to the sectors of economy. So let's look at the, the options that we have for, for the um, various, for this question here. So option A is secondary, option B is primary, option C is tertiary, and the final option is the economic sector. All right, so let's go see how you guys have done there. So we've got a lot of A um, for secondary, um, quite a few of you have got um, for, for the primary, and then uh, very little of you picked for, for tertiary and for the economic. And if we look at our answer, it is the secondary sector. All right, so if we look there, they are manufacturing paint. All right, so when they, they manufacture paint, they're taking uh, raw, raw materials that they would have got from the primary sector, uh, and they could have also possibly bought some other raw materials from other secondary sector um, enterprises, right, and then they are making that paint, that, that final product, right, which is the secondary sector. So they'll either sell that, that product to, to consumers, or they'll sell it to, to businesses in the tertiary sector so that they can um, uh, create a, a service for, for their consumers. So manufacturing, when, as soon as you see the term manufacturing, start to think of, uh, of the secondary sector uh, because it's got to do with uh, manufacturing and converting those raw materials into semi-finished products or finished products. All right, so if we look at the next question, this act, so the minute that you see uh, the, the word act, think of the law, so you know that we're dealing with the law now, uh, regulates the implementation of affirmative action when a business appoints new workers. Right, so we've got uh, our various options here. So the first one is the Consumer Protection Act. Right, option B is the Employment Equity Act. Right, option C is the Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment Act. And then finally, option D is the Labor Relations Act. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got four different acts here. So let's see how, how you guys performed in this one. All right, so not many for uh, the Consumer Protection Act. Uh, we've got quite a few for um, the Employment Equity Act. Uh, not many for um, the broad-based Black Economic 
Empowerment Act. And then a lot of you went for the Labor Relations Act. Now, this is something where a lot of you get confused between the Employment uh, Equity Act and the Labor Relations Act when it comes to affirmative action. Right, so the answer that we're actually looking for was the Employment Equity Act. Remember that there, that there are provisions in that act that have to uh, uh, deal with um, redressing past uh, imbalances. Um, the Employment Equity Act is all about making sure that the business is representative of the, the demographics of, of the country. So, and if need be, they can use affirmative action in which to redress any, uh, any imbalances there. Where if you look at the Consumer Protection Act, that's got to do with making sure that consumers aren't getting taken advantage of, uh, making sure that the, the goods and services that we buy are safe for us, um, that we have all the information we need when, when buying particular products. Um, if you look at broad-based black economic empowerment, uh, that, that act has to do with um, redressing past imbalances and giving people that were previously disadvantaged um, chances to partake um, uh, in, in the economic um, development of, of the country. So just make sure that you, that you understand your different acts effectively because if you don't, you're going to get confused with them and you're going to lose out on a lot of marks. You could potentially lose out 10% of your paper if you, if you don't understand which acts belong, belong where. All right, so our final thoughts before, the, before, before your exam, please, whatever you do, make sure you get an early night's sleep. You want to be aiming for at least eight hours. Um, try and make sure that you regulate uh, your sleeping time so it's not uh, out of sync, so that you're feeling nice and fresh uh, for the morning. Um, read the instructions carefully. I've seen uh, a lot of mistakes where some learners answer all three questions from section B rather than just two questions or they answer um, both, uh, both essay questions. Right? That's the, the, they're not going to uh, count for, for the full amount there. You're only going to mark the, the first question of your essay question. They're only going to mark the first two questions of your section B question. And on top of that, if you're doing um, uh, extra questions, you're just going to be using up your time and you're not going to be using your time as efficiently as you should. So business studies is all about making sure that we're using our time as efficiently as possible because if we don't, um, we, we, uh, we're going to run out of time and you, and you can lose a lot of marks there. And that can be the difference between uh, you getting a distinction, uh, it can be the difference between you passing and failing or getting enough uh, points for, for your university or tertiary um, education. So make sure you read the instructions carefully. Um, read uh, the questions carefully. When they ask you to quote, make sure that you quote uh, correctly uh, with your quotation marks so that you don't lose out on, uh, on any unnecessary marks there. Um, as I said, manage your time. Right? You are allowed to start to answer with any question that you, that you want to. Um, so if you want to start with your, your essay question first, you're more than welcome to do that. If you want to start with your section B, that's fine there. Just please don't waste a lot of time on your section A questions where, you, where you're reading the different options and you get stuck there because you can always go back to them and it's very quick to, to uh, write the answers down for that compared to your section B and your section C is where you have to write in, uh, in full sentences. So just make sure that... Uh, you, you, you're managing your, your time effectively. Um, always look at the clock um, and, and go according to the time guidelines that they, they'll give you in the exam there. Make sure you, you leave yourself enough time. Uh, I would recommend that when you have your 10 minutes reading time, start with your essay question. See which of the essay questions you, you'd like to attempt and then, um, and then you can start with that and then you can uh, um, read your, your section A questions. And, and all the best matriculants. Um, I'm sure you, you guys are absolutely going to go out there and crush it and uh, don't uh, have any regrets by not uh, studying hard enough. Looney, back to you. Thank you, Dave.
Matrix, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you got a lot of tips and got enough help that you need in order to prepare for your exams. We're wishing you everything of the best. We hope you ace your exams. And if you need any help, guys, you still have time. Hit us up on our social media platforms and we'll assist you as best as we can. Congratulations to all of the competition winners who will be announced after the show on our Facebook page. And don't forget, guys, we still have more revision for you. Just check out our schedule on www.wasamatrix.co.za. If you miss any of the shows, they are uploaded on our YouTube channel as well. So just search for Wasamatrix and you'll find them there. But then from Looney, Nicolene and Dave, thank you and goodbye. Walza Metrics 2021 Catch Up is brought to you by the Department of Basic Education, NECT, ETDP CETA, SABC, MultiChoice, and DBE TV on OpenView Channel 122 in partnership with.